Can we turn beets, honey, or sorghum into crystallized sugar? Let's find out. This is our sugar bush. It is just full of maple trees. We didn't plant any of these. They were all just here. We're at the northernmost tip of the maple distribution. You don't really find maple trees much further north of where we are. When we make maple sugar, we heat up the syrup to 130 degrees Celsius to remove water and concentrate the sugars. As it cools, it forms crystals and we agitate it in order to keep those crystals small. We don't want big clumps of maple sugar that we have to process later. This makes beautiful crystallized sugar. Now why this method of heating and agitating works for maple syrup all boils down to two main factors. One, the concentration of sucrose, glucose, and fructose in the syrup. And two, the amount and types of impurities in the syrup. I will now go into more detail about each of these factors. But first, I would like to preface this with I am not a food scientist. I am just interested in how food is made and like to have a hand in our food production. I am also concerned about the nutritional, social, and environmental impacts of industrialized food production, including sugar. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. There are three main types of sugars. So we have fructose, glucose, and sucrose. Sucrose is the sugar in what we call table sugar, and it is the main ingredient in maple syrup. In fact, the only sugar in maple sap coming right out of the tree is sucrose. Sucrose has 12 carbons and can be broken down into glucose and fructose, which each have six. The darker maple syrup actually gets some of that color from reactions with glucose and fructose, which are made from the sucrose by bacteria breaking it down. Pretty cool. Sucrose, the magical ingredient, it readily crystallizes, where fructose and glucose actually inhibit crystallization. So the higher the sucrose and the lower the fructose and the glucose, the more likely you'll be able to make crystallized sugar with your syrup. Sources of sugar, like honey or sorghum, they have too much fructose and glucose and not enough sucrose, and so they do not readily crystallize. And so this method of heating and agitating really won't make crystallized sugar from those two. Next, impurities. If there are too many impurities in the syrup, then the sucrose molecules cannot interact with each other to form crystals. This is why we call sugar from cane and beets refined sugar. The impurities need to be removed before the sugar can be turned into crystals. In cane sugar, after the plant matter has been removed, what is left over, the impurities left over, is actually the molasses. So you need to remove the molasses from the sucrose in order to make crystallized sugar. Molasses is super sticky and it sticks to the sucrose molecules and prevents them from being able to crystallize. There isn't a name for the impurities that are in beet sugar. So turning beets and cane into sugar is a multi-step process which includes removing all these impurities from the syrup. So now you know some of the science behind how we turn maple syrup into maple sugar and why you might not be able to do the same with some other sources of sugar. Now let's go eat some sugar caddis.